Hello and welcome to this afternoon's session on digital audience development. My name's Annie Deary and I work for InnerEar, a digital media production company based here in Glasgow. So we're going to look at digital audience development and in this session we're going to explore how you can find, engage and build a relationship with your audience using readily available social media services. Okay, so... Um, Developing your audience for using social media, you may want to start with um, defining your brand values. So thinking about what kind of characteristics um, you'd like to be associated with or characteristics you are already associated with. Um, maybe one way of doing this would be to think about um, in a brainstorming session um, what kind of words you'd associate with your brand if you were starting from scratch or for large organisations, um, what's the thinking behind the values that you're already associated with. Um, we'll look at locating your audience and seeing what environment your audience hangs out online. Perhaps your business is more suited to a presence on, say, Facebook rather than LinkedIn, um, or if there are other more specialist niche environments that maybe will have more impact um, with a smaller but more focused audience. We'll look at um, creating content. Um, you might want to think about creating your own unique content. Um, whether that's a short video introducing your product or service or a showreel or perhaps you want to kind of develop a reputation within your industry and sector. Um, you can develop your audience by positioning your unique content um, across existing online services where the discussion is already taking place. For instance, if there are groups on LinkedIn, um, you've got an opportunity to comment and develop your brand um, by being visible um, in those online discussions. Um, you will want to engage with these online communities so you may need to take some time out to subscribe to relevant blogs and get an idea on where those um, conversations are taking place online already. Clicking through, looking at inviting participation, responding and rewarding to ultimately lead to lasting um, relationships. So um, just a little background on it. In a way, it's a creative content communications company based in Glasgow. Um, so focusing on creating content, so that's kind of digital media production, um, social media engagement, communicating content, which is what I spend a lot of my time doing um, alongside training and consultancy. Um, so some of our audience development projects include Walking Heads, um, a series of audio walking tours, um, taking a uh, behind the scenes look at different cities, um, Kilta, a niche social network for the Scottish diaspora, um, Hebrides Ensemble, a contemporary classical music group, um, and Queen Street's uh, renewable energy uh, community for one of the large energy providers. So um, if you want to think first about how you define your brand values, um, maybe you think about the kind of characteristics that help define a brand. Um, you know, if you think about the symbolism that your logo conveys, if there's a specific set of colours that you use, um, do you use a consistent logo across all your social media profiles? Um, What's your reason for existence? I think that's really what's meant by um, mission statement. Um, and what do you want to be and what makes your organisation unique? Um, we know the old adage of action speaking louder than words, so the way up your organisation conducts itself can also help define your brand. Um, brand values can be organic, but they can also be nurtured, so um, they grow around your back brand, garnering trust, um, with your audience um, and crucially adding value to your business. Um, your brand values can also help personify um, your brand. For instance, if there are a set of um, characteristics that an individual you'd like to see uh, representing your brand holds, it can help to visualise talking to that person or communicating with that person um, with your digital media, social media um, communications. So, Brands can elicit an emotional response, um, the values that obviously are associated with the brand, 
um, you maybe want to fit uh, that in with the expectations and values of your audience and work out how that's different to your competitors. Um, so yes, the emotional response can help uh, foster the relationship with your audience. By setting out to portray your brand online with a consistent approach, there are some simple ways you can help define your brand. Um, the use of consistent uh, naming across your social media profiles. If you're just getting set up, um, there are services like Namecheck, that's N-A-M-E-C-H-K dot com, that will search a variety of social media platforms if you're just starting out and haven't created um, you know, your Twitter profile or your Facebook um, page URL. <clears throat> so, you know, there are some small kind of deviations that you could use. For instance, you know, Flickr, drop the E. Um, and, you know, so there are, if, you, if you can get a consistent name across all your profiles, that would be a good start. Um, the username, the image or the icon that you use should be consistent across your social media profiles. Um, so where you have an opportunity to use... Um, Background images, for instance, so customising YouTube channels and, of course, on uh, your Twitter.com page. Um, you can customise that in line with your brand or, you know, if there's any kind of seasonal event happening or anything that's kind of topical where you're using that um, consistent, the, the same um, imagery, um, you've got an opportunity to do that through your social media profiles as well, which kind of helps to um, express your personality um, and, you know, it's making you think about what type of personality your brand exhibits online. So um, with your <clears throat> communications, you may want to think about keeping them in line with the rest of your brand and maybe you want to avoid overtly personal or non-relevant uh, use of your company profiles for slightly off-topic discussions. That's not to say that you don't want to have the kind of personal um, insight into the people using um, a Twitter profile. You certainly don't want to be faceless, but um, maybe you could use your own Twitter profile for, for that. So other things that you can do, kind of obvious, but always complete your social media profiles. So um, filling out the biography information, description information, and of course any links back to your own website and your other social media um, profiles and other points of contact online. So we'll look now at locating your audience. Um, so whether you're starting out or have an established customer base, you can develop your online audience um, once you've located where they are. So <clears throat> there are some tools that you can use to locate your audience. It's fairly straightforward, um, search.twitter.com, um, and there are some more advanced things you can do in there with keywords and phrases. Um, if your customer base is geographically located in one area, you might want to use tools like GeoChirp, where you can set up searches for words referenced on, um, that have been referenced in Twitter based on a geographical location. So for a lot of small businesses, things like that can be really effective. Um, so using Facebook as a page, um, you can monitor conversations that are taking place. Um, I don't know if you've ever done a search in the um, Facebook and you've got a selection of options down the left-hand side. If you select post by everyone, you can also get a, a feel for the the volume and the quantity of um, specific terms or phrases that people are looking for. Um, and I think with uh, logging in to Facebook as your organization, as a page, you've got an opportunity to then um, join in discussions that are taking place, perhaps on other pages that are relevant. Um, so it kind of puts your company name out there and becomes part of the conversation that other individuals or other organizations are having. So you're really making use of the functionality um, that these services provide. Um, and you may already be a member of some specialist online communities. Um, for instance, with LinkedIn, you can be a member of up to 50 LinkedIn groups. So you want to join in those communities and see what your um, contemporaries are doing um, in that space. So set up Google Alerts. Um, they can be used for mentions of targeted keywords. Um, I often use Google Reader to aggregate my Google Alerts and other RSS feeds, plus tools like Social Mention. 
So you get to see when your brand, let's say Kilter, for instance, is mentioned online in different blogs or um, on Twitter. Um, yeah, and then there are other um, tools such as social mention, as I um, mentioned, um, that track um, conversations that are happening about a brand online. So we'll look now at creating content and um, creating content can be a daunting task if you have not really experienced at doing so. Um, so before looking at creating your own unique content, um, it's not a bad idea to have a look at your existing content because um, you might already have a good stock of content that you can work with. So, um, what kind of content do you have already? Um, um, if there's an opportunity to repurpose web copy, um, maybe you can upload that to services like Issue, and um, maybe your blog posts uh, have been running on a theme. So again, that would make um, you know, perhaps a nice uh, audio podcast if uh, your, your blog content is thematically linked or how-to guides or top 10 tips um, or best practice kind of case studies that are already has in a blog could be repurposed, um, maybe even create made into videos. So um, do you have an, a listing of events that can be populated on different profiles like Facebook and LinkedIn? Um, also, not to disregard the physical programs and brochures you might have and thinking about how some of that existing um, content can be reworked online. So, creating new content from your existing content. Um, perhaps, as I was saying, some of your content might lend itself to um, being produced into videos. For instance, customer testimonials are fairly easy and inexpensive perhaps to obtain. Um, or if there's been other chat um, supporting your brand online, you know, on Twitter, on Facebook, maybe you can use screen grabs of that and create a video to support what other people are saying about you. And that's kind of quite real and people like to be included and mentioned um, things. So um, podcasts are another good example. Um, any audio content um, and blog posts that you may already have can easily be recorded as spoken word pieces to create podcasts um, for serialization on platforms like Mixcloud um, and for shorter audio pieces, um, audioboo.fm, that will also automatically create an iTunes listing for your podcast. Um, any presentations that you use for um, sales, meetings, um, marketing um, presentations that you use offline can also be transformed for use in online tools like SlideShare where you can upload your PDF or your PowerPoint or Keynote documents um, and you can even add audio to your presentation. So in effect, you've got a really rich piece of um, engaging content that you can repurpose online on your own site and your own blog and it links really well to LinkedIn and works well on Facebook. Um, so that's a, you know, quite a complete package that, um, you know, even using your built-in microphone on your laptop um, a lot of people could go away and do that quite quickly. Um, any other kind of documents could be housed on platforms like Issue. Um, so if you've got PDFs or you know Word documents, um, the advantages of using platforms like Issue are that you've got a really nice looking player. So um, with video, of course, rather than having to host your own video content online, um, things like YouTube and Vimeo um, just make it a lot easier to um, share your content and um, for people to find your content as well as being able to embed that and take it um, onto your own blog and sharing through social media. Um, so by conducting research into the relevant blogs that are um, within your industry, um, you can gain a much bigger audience by participating and uh, commenting on other blog posts. So, if you participate in the discussion with potential audience members, you can subscribe to join and um, comment on blogs, on YouTube channels. So, if your business or organisation has a YouTube profile, um, if you, or if you don't have one, you can create one. And it gives another platform for you to leave comments on other videos that um, are relevant to what your organisation um, is 
aiming for um, and also another way of um, reinforcing what you're doing on your own website or perhaps on your own channel by highlighting what um, what content you've got that uh, could be of interest. So Facebook pages, um, if you log in as your organisation Facebook page, um, you can find other relevant pages, um, maybe competitor organisations, and you can um, see the kind of conversations that are taking place on those, um, and you can see the kind of people who are engaging them. And by commenting as your brand, as your company, you've got a chance to um, position yourself as being a part of that scene, a part of that conversation. Um, and of course you can do the same thing with blogs and joining other people's conversations that are already quite active that are happening on Twitter can be another easy, quick way of um, reaching, growing your audience and reaching the people that you want to be um, associated with. And this kind of works across um, any topic or any subject matter that you're interested in. If you want to um, grow your audience, then you, know, you can lend credibility from um, higher profile individuals by engaging in conversation with them, retweeting them, and um, hopefully they'll follow you back and find what you're saying interesting too. Um, so to engage with communities, you can join groups, um, you can like pages, um, you can sign up to forums, and of course you can participate in specialist communities. So, um, you know, I think the whole part of this is uh, social. So by being complimentary and having a constructive voice um, is a great way of sharing credibility. Um, you know, particularly if you're looking at raising your profile, perhaps with high profile organizations or individuals or, you know, as is the nature of social media globally. Um, so Twitter is an excellent network where you can uh, extend your reach and get to a much larger audience than you can with you know, traditional um, communication methods. So yeah, I think whether you're commenting on someone else's, else's blog post or joining the discussion in an online community, if you ensure your profile has a common username, um, your avatar uses your logo, and your signature links to your website, so you know, on your email, um, so you really want to kind of join up the um, activities that you're doing on social so it's not just kind of happening out there and probably doesn't want to be the domain of one person within um, an organisation. So um, you might wonder how you can encourage and invite participation. Um, people quite like answering polls, answering questions. You can run polls on your um, website using tools like TwitPoll, um, and they're easy to share then socially. Um, it's a cost-effective way of um, reaching more people and getting, getting their feedback. Um, Tim spoke earlier about how social media can be used to crowdsource ideas for new projects. Um, a conversation is about upcoming opportunities already taking place on Twitter or Facebook or perhaps even LinkedIn. Um, you can create events um, in the real world. You can use live streaming tools like Ustream, Livestream, and kind of designed for bands, stage it. Um, with fairly minimal effort and fairly minimal entry um, costs to reach a much wider audience and to have some uh, documentation of the work that you've done um, as well. Um, so, respond and reward. Should you give responses to, stock responses to complaints? Um, best practice is probably not to have a stock response for complaint, but that said, in practice, you might have a few ways in which you can respond to certain kinds of queries, but if people are taking the time to offer feedback, um, whether it's positive or negative, it's courteous for you to respond in a personal way too. Um, so where should you respond to complaints? Um, maybe responded to in a public forum, but the tendency to respond to complaints immediately is there, but there may also be an opportunity for hanging back to see if any other audience members would want to express their own um, take on a complaint or take up a certain issue or really want to hope that they'll come to your defense. Okay, so um, 
other courteous social media, social things that you can do um, online are follow your followers. Um, you know, if you kind of treat other people how you'd like to be treated, um, answering questions, um, and, you know, translating that to the digital world. You know, if you've already got a mailing list, you might want to offer additional content for your um, valued members of your audience and encourage a kind of culture of friends of um, your company, of your organisation, whether that's offering bonus um, material um, or you know, discounts on your services, um, or other privileges that might be relevant. Um, so really what you want to enable people to um, belong to your brand and give them some recognition and some reward for doing that. So by listening, monitoring, engaging social media channels, you can ascertain what the key opportunities are that your audience um, wants. So um, if you use your communication to find out what, what your audience wants um, and give it to them, or um, in a more commercial setting, you may want to sell, um, uh, sell to them. So if you really know what your audience are looking for, social media provides a good opportunity to um, spot that need and help deliver, um, deliver to them. Um, that also in turn will help your audience grow. So looking at building long-lasting relationships. Um, so once you've developed your audience, you can work with them. Um, you need to develop your audience so that you can run campaigns. Um, so listen to um, what your audience wants and kind of take them by the hand um, with a campaign. Um, we heard earlier from Tim Wright about how crowdsourcing um, and crowdfunding can be combined to um, generate incentives and maintain trust um, with your brand. Okay, so you can see some more of our online resources, uh, SlideShare, Issue, Vimeo, um, we're at facebook.com slash UK, um, same profile name on Twitter, um, Inneria UK, and um, do get in touch, let me know how you're getting on developing your audience and feel free to contact me with any questions. I'm also on Twitter. Um, so yeah, thanks for your time. <laughs>